you what I love about God. Even on Mother's Day, <laughs> he starts moving men. And see, that wasn't a thing years ago, Elder Davis. But on Mother's Day, and I just want to say once again, Happy Mother's Day. Would you just join me very briefly as we jump into this word, jump into this word. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready. Find you another one and say, I'm ready. Uh-huh. Uh, who's got, we got Ashley back there and Deaconess Payne. Bless you all. Um, let's go to Matthew 20 and 16. Matthew 20 and 16, ESV version. Listen to the word of God. So the last, I said, so the last will be first. I wish somebody say first. Uh huh. And the first shall be, oh, we got some scholars in the house today. Now go to Luke 2 and 7, Luke 2 and 7. And she gave birth to her firstborn. Somebody say firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place. I wish somebody say place. <laughs> uh, for them in the end. Now somebody say first place. All right, let's go to Kings. Let's go to Kings 3 and 27. Then the king answered and said, give the living child to the first woman. <laughs> just say it to yourself, mother. Just say first woman. <laughs> and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. Uh, let's go to Timothy 1 and 5. I am, reminding, I am reminded of your sincere faith. A faith that dwells what? First. Say it with me first. In your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I'm sure dwells in you as well. Say first. Last verse, last verse. Now when he rose early on when? The first day. Say first day. Of the week. He appeared when? First. To Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Somebody say he appeared to her first. Uh -huh. Let's tag this text with a quick title. First place mothers. <laughs> uh, look, if I you somebody, put that up there for me, Eric. I mean, Ashley up there. Put up um, the sign. Now say this with me. First place. Thank you, sir. First place mothers. Come on over here. Say it with me on this side. Say first place, first place. mothers. Now, when we talk about first place mothers, first place mothers, um, first place is defined as leading, top of the beginning. You know, first, first. Also, we use this term first place in statements like um, from the beginning, from the own site. I mean, give me an example. For example, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? I think I got to. <laughs> in other words, you could have avoided all this, but you didn't tell me that. Say it with me in the first place. Okay. So we got two different meanings here. We got position as of in sports, first place, and then we got the position as a phrase. Well, Bishop, what is this first place, mothers? Let me be the first one to let you know, and it's been said all morning, that mothers are first in the production of anything. I'm going to get some help somewhere today. I may have said myself. Uh, uh, but, 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 but mothers, mothers, um, there there's three definitions of a mother. Now, most of the time we think of mothers, we think of someone that has to birth something. That is one aspect of it. But mothers are three-dimensional. Say three-dimensional. First of all, if you look up mother, it says woman first. Woman in relation to her child or relation to a child. Ain't no do with birth, is it? 
That's the, so the first thing is a relationship with her child or any other child. That's the first component dimension of a mother. Secondly, it says to bring up a child or care for or, affect, or have affection for a child. See, I just messed up somebody theologically right there. So, so first of all, it's a relationship. Secondly, you got to care for a child. You have to have affection. And then thirdly, it's the birthing process. So, so, so mothers come in, in, in three-dimensional. Uh, we're going to talk about the three areas of a first-place mother. The three areas of a first-place mother. And then get you out of here. Uh, number one, we already talked about, it is the location. We're going to talk about the location, the relationship, and the rearing. The location, the relationship, uh, and the rearing. Uh, and, and, and so if we break that thing down, in other words, the three-dimensional uh, mother has something to do with before, during, and after. Before, during, and after. Even in sports, in, if, if you're going to be first place in something, University of Alabama, uh, first place all last year, they had to do something first. Preparation. Then when the preparation they call preseason was all over, that's a bunch of talk. Now get on the field, let's see what you're going to do. And then in postseason, what do they do in postseason? Same thing with mothers. Mothers are doing things before we even get up in the morning. A first place mother already praying for you, already know that's going to happen, already prayed for you, already tried to warn us beforehand. A first place mother. A first place mother know when you're hanging around with the bad people. A first place mother, not your mother, but she lived down the street. She see how you're walking because she knew how you walked last week. She see who you're walking with. Let me leave that alone. She see how you're walking. Let me come out of that. So, 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 so if we're going to talk about before, during, and after, uh, well, let's go to this. Um, see, when I was a child, when I was a child, uh, and, and, and we had these mother's colloquials, these terms, these sayings. Uh, you know, I grew up around a lot of kids, and then when somebody would get in trouble, or you hit someone, and the first thing they'll say, I'm going and tell. See there? Y'all had the same thing. That was the first thing. I said, I'm going and tell mama. And then, you know, it was always a tattletale. And then they would run and tell my mama. I said, no, my cousin, nephew, run and tell my mama. That. So I said, I'm going to tell mama. That's number one. Then they go tell mama. Then they come back. You know what they say. Mama's, mama said. See, so, so I'm going to tell mama, not mama said, and, and that you're going to get it. But then thirdly, yeah, I didn't worry too much about them going to tell mama. And when they came back and said, Mama said, I said, that's okay. But when they said this right here, Mama's coming. See, when Mama coming, everybody wanted to straighten up. Because right after Mama came, there was some pain. Okay, let me leave that up. See, 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 first place mothers have what we call respect. First place mother put things in order, in order. The, the, the same way when we talk about first place winners, that's also three-dimensional. But, but let me say this, first place mothers have the three B's, I call them. They're beautiful, they're bold, and they're brilliant. First place mothers are beautiful, bold, and brilliant. Bishop, break that down, I will. In the spirit and in the natural. You see, mothers can make, and we talked about it a little earlier this morning, mothers can take something that looks like nothing and make it turn into something. A mother can take a sheet and make a curtain and look like it came from Saks Fifth Avenue. A mother can cook a dish with nothing in the refrigerator and you think you're at the top restaurant. A mother can pick you up when you feel down, everything wrong. You ain't nothing going right and she can just say a word. Mothers are beautiful in the spirit and in the natural. Let, 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 let me talk about the boldness. This is what we love about mothers. Mothers are bold uh, in their emotions and in their actions. Uh, a, a mother can be crying one moment and laughing the next moment. A mother can say, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I know someone that's going to work it out. And we get happy and get excited because of their faith. Somebody say a first place mother. But here's the one, brother, first place mothers are brilliant, mentally and initiatively. Let me break down that mental. 
Most mothers sometimes may not have the Ivy League education. But they can tell you how to work out a problem. You see, see some, sometimes uh, you may not even know how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to meet all this. And you go talk to your mom. Mom say, you pay this and then you pay that. And you move this over here and you do it like this. And then you go down there and do it like that. And she don't have no education, but she's brilliant mentally because the Holy Ghost told her how to do it. Prom time coming. All these things coming. You need a new dress. Have no money for a new dress. Mother go in there and take one of her dresses. Take some needle and some thread. <laughs> And you're the sharpest thing at the prom. Let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. But, but, but let, let, let me say this. I'm, can I ask a question? Now, I almost finished. Can I ask a question just before making my next statement? Can I, can I ask a question? Let, let me ask this question. Uh, uh, and it, it's really a correlation to my, my next question. If a house is up for sale, Deaconess Grant, who's a realtor in, in Ashley, if a house is up for sale and it has a garage listed, is it a garage if there's no car in it? It's still a garage. I, I, I'm, I'm asking, it's, it is still a garage, right? Doesn't matter what's in it. Do, do people put other things in their garage? Now, since we agree on that, let me, let me, let me make this statement down. Every woman is a mother because they have a womb. Doesn't matter if anything in it or not. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? You a woman because you got a womb. Just like the garage is part of the house, whether it's a car in it or not. So when Jesus did three-dimensional, he wanted mothers not to just birth, but to be caregivers, to be lovers, to be nurturers, to be mentors. Watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. What, what you say, well, um, I'm bitching, what, 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 what are you saying then? I'm going to rush and call my witness, but let me say this first. Mark 16 and 9. Jesus appeared first to Mary Magdalene. They said, Bishop, now, 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 what are you talking about Mary Magdalene for? Not known for children. But I would tell you that Mary Magdalene was really the mother to the apostles. Some theologians say she was the apostle to the apostles. Prove that, Bishop, I will. The first person that Jesus appeared to was Mary Magdalene. That, 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 that people, theologians have, and scholars have wondered why because she was a birther. Okay, you didn't catch what I said. First of all, you see, the reason she was a birther is because if you go to Matthew uh, 16 and 19, I'm going to read this to you. Watch this real quick. It said, Matthew 16 and 9, ESV. Now when he rose early on the fourth day, on what day? On the first day, now we're talking about Jesus, when he arose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. But watch this, from whom he had what? Cast out seven demons. When you've been delivered from something, you know how to deliver. When you've been delivered from some stuff, you become the master of deliverance. So, 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 so that's why, so Jesus uh, appealed to her first, but watch this. Of all the people that Jesus could have appeared to first after the resurrection, he called a true mother. A true mother, Mary Magdalene. Watch this. At, as the first testimony, who gave the first testimony that Jesus was alive. Let me put it in your terminology. Mary Magdalene was the first mother of voicemail. Y'all gonna get that tomorrow. Because he told her to go tell them. You still not catching it. He gave her a word to go deliver. And when she delivered the word, it caused the other disciples to run and come see. Somebody say a first place mother. But I gotta talk, I'm on my school, I'm trying to get you out of here. See, see, first of all, she had to get up early. First, a first place mother, I told you, is up early. Then she had to get her spices together. I'm not getting this. Had to get her supplies together, three dimensional. Then she had to walk to the tomb. First of all, if you got your spices and you're walking and you up early, how you going to get in? So she had faith. 
She had faith. If I'm first, then God going to do the rest. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And in her faith, she got there, and God spoke to her first and gave her a mission to go and tell others first. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus chose a woman. Here's another piece that I'm, I'm trying to get out here. Jesus chose a woman. Now, if you really look at history, Jesus told her to preach. You're not catching it. Jesus said, go tell them that I have risen. That's a word. Jesus told a woman in that day to go preach. Back then, all of the scholars of the theological world believed it was better to burn the word of God than a woman to preach. A woman couldn't even speak. And here it is, this first place, mother. He gave her a word. You go catch up. I, I, I know your mother didn't go to seminary. I, I know your mother don't preach on Sunday. I know your mother just helped out in hospitality. But when she give you a word, you better listen up. Watch this. It is also worth noting that, that, that Mary Magdalene was one who helped fund Jesus' ministry. Now, I ain't got time to get into that today because I'm trying to get you out and let you get your lunch. But, but she had a little money, money, money. Okay, you don't catch that. <laughs> she had a little money. Uh, see, she, she, watch this. I'm going to get ready to close on this in a minute. But here we go. Mary Magdalene, she stood and watched Jesus when he was on the cross. She watched the agony. She watched the pain. She watched the piercing in the side. She watched him when he hung his head and died. But then she watched him when they took him down. Somebody don't catch where we're going. Then she watched him when they laid him in the tomb. What you said? Your mother going to be there with you when times are bad? When, when things look like it's all over? Even though your mother may not be here, the Bible said so there's a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, and so she watched where they laid him. Why did she watch Bishop where they laid him? She watched where they laid Jesus because she knew I'm going to come back and watch him get up. Your mother will watch you when you go down because she has an expectation that you're going to get up. Nobody may come see you in the penitentiary. Nobody may come see you when you're incarcerated. But a mother is coming. And the reason why you got out on probation is because that first place mother sent up a first place prayer. Let, 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 let me close out on this. Watch this. See, uh, if you go to Jeremiah 29 and 13, Jeremiah 29 and 13, it says, and her love was rewarded. God said, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. God rewards a person, especially a mother, when she is diligent. That's the reason why you blessed right now, sitting here in your right mind. Could have been in intensive care, could have been gone. All because your mother say, Lord, help my child. All because your mother say, I know, Lord, they ain't doing right, but Lord, have mercy on my child. A first place mother will take time in their day to seek the Lord for you, not for themselves. A first place mother will take time to wait on the Lord. We run in here, we run in there. And every time you see your mom, she's just sitting there patiently waiting and saying, the Lord will work it out. Because she's waiting on the Lord. A first place mother have defeated several oppositions. Just like in sports, you don't get the first place unless you won some games. Your mother is a first place mother because she has some defeated some demons. Okay, you didn't catch what I said. The Bible just said that Mary Magdalene, that Jesus delivered seven demons. See, a first place mother has some victories. Watch it. A first place mother is cheered. <laughs> see, see, when you're in trouble, I don't care who comes see about you, but when your mother comes, you start cheering. When you get in trouble, other people run to your mother to tell you, your child. When you go to the doctor, the doctor gives a report to your mother. First, somebody say first place mothers. Watch this. Come on, Mr. Ray. A first place mother is expected to win. <laughs> see, see when, when you got a first place mother, things may look bad, things may look down, but if you can just get to her, you expect her to win. And if she winning, you know you're going to win. Tell your neighbor first place mother. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise right there.